I'm going to, from now on, uh, I'm going to um, do a, the wrap up slash Zoom, virtual Zoom at the same time. And it won't be nine to 10 at night. Now, what, I only have three of you here, but I guess you all can help me decide uh, what the best time for that could be. I, I can do it as early as two in the afternoon, uh, really, two, I, I, I hate to say, you know, every day. The, pro, the, real, the reason I wasn't doing that was because, let me turn on the chat here. The reason I wasn't doing that was because I felt like um, so you might be in another class, right? Maybe, maybe you're uh, Zooming your English class and, and you don't want to be trying to Zoom physics as well if you wanted to be there for the live presentation. I, don't, I thought about Zooming my class in the morning, but that, that, that doesn't, that's not going to work very well. Oh, hi, hi Sophia. Good. We're trying to decide, I'm trying to decide. I'm not going to do any more of these 9 to 10 Zooms because I'm not getting a lot of, uh, I mean, I have like 25 or so virtual kids and only you know four or five are showing up so it's good that you're sh showing up but anyway so uh this is going to be a wrap-up slash live zoom tonight but i'm going to do this continue to do this every day so there'll be every time we have a class there'll be a live zoom slash wrap-up so in other words i'm just i'm doing the usual wrap i normally do i'm just opening up to you guys to be there and to ask questions or just to sit and listen or whatever, and I'll record them. This, this, like I'm recording this now. So um, it'll be the same as the wrap up, only enhanced with, with you guys being there. Not every time, but if you got a question. So the only t question I have is, and I'm thinking there'll be probably on 45 minutes because it'll be what happened in class without all the, uh, you know, all the BS that goes on in the classroom, announcements and all that stuff. Um, so, uh, the only the only question is when to do it, and my I can do it as early as two in the afternoon, or as late as starting starting at two, starting at three, starting at four or four thirty. Four thirty is the latest I'd want to start. I think four p.m. is fine. Starting at four, uh, Io says. Now, what say you, Rose, Andrew, Sophia? Any of those are fine for me. Four, four thirty. Andrew says. Okay. Um, yeah, any of them are fine for me. Okay, because you know, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to overlap your English class or whatever you were doing. You know, but four wouldn't do that. It might might mess up you if you have out. You know, sports after school or something. Um, so. Let's shoot for um, four, four to five. Okay, four to five. Okay, so four o'clock tomorrow, we'll start it for the. And so it won't be once a week. It'll be up to five times a week, and it'll be recorded. And of course, it's optional. Okay, so I think that's the main thing I wanted to. So I got that straightened out. Um, we'll see. And if, and if it doesn't work, I don't know why it wouldn't work, but, um, then maybe I'll try another time. All right. Now I'm going to share and we're going to go through what happened today. And now see, I don't have to talk about all week. I, 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 I'll give you a clue, but I don't have to, now I don't feel pressure to talk about the whole week. Just mainly talking about today. And so I'll go over the announcements, kind of what happened today. And all right, in a timely manner. So class number nine, uh, this is you all. I showed my kids today, the virtual class, that there are other students taking this course. And um, that's really, you guys are really my biggest class now. So a good looking bunch. There's still some of you that haven't taken the test yet, but all of you have. So we am going to talk about that. Uh, well, we had cookies today, sorry. It's something I can't give you guys. And I don't, we don't do it much anymore. We used to always give away food when I had a cantina. We were always eating good food. Uh, so this is November and, it's, and this is as of yesterday. So this does, this does concern you. Uh, looking at this week, okay, there we are. 
I'll, I'll change this calendar, obviously, because I'm going to be changing these things. So I'll take those off and I'll move, I'll put something on there about the virtual. Um, you all took the test. So I'm recording this. So I need to talk not just to you four, but to talk to other people. So if you are a virtual student and you're watching this, you're, and you've not taken the test, your last day to take the test is uh, the fourth of, uh, okay, so Wednesday. After that, it's a zero. I've, I've postponed this things two or three times. For all of you now, the, sub the submit time for sheet 2.5 is midnight on Wednesday. I'm going to work number four today with you guys. I'll work through it. I'll work through it in the class. Uh, and then we'll work five together tomorrow or no, probably Wednesday. We'll work five together. But this is due late Wednesday night. So you only have to do one, two, and three, and then you have to write down what happened on four and five. But we'll do those together. Now, here's the new thing. Uh, black and blue starts Thursday. It, it may get pushed. Uh, this may end up, this is just, this is a virtual special here. This may get, this may get pushed to uh, Friday, starting Friday, because I still, I'm still having a hard time tracking down three, three students. And um, I want to be fair and give them a chance to take that test. And they may have their electricity out or whatever. So uh, I got to have all the tests taken before I do it because I'm going to give the test back and uh, I'm not quite done with it. I'm down to, I got three problems to grade. I'll get those done. Do them one problem at a time. I'll get those done uh, and then I'll put the grades in the grade book. You'll see that. And then for you all, uh, your place, you know, where you, this is where you do your pickup. This is like your post. This is like your PO box. So, oh, and by the way, in the handouts, the handbacks box right here, uh, I have, if, if you haven't gotten your notebook back, your notebook's in that handbacks box, handbacks box. And I'll take those out tonight. Um, I'm only gonna put those in there when I'm here. And I guess they're still down there. So I will take those out before I go to bed tonight. I don't want these little ghosts and goblins to take them. And then I'll put them back out there tomorrow when I get home so that I'm kind of always around. I don't want you guys to lose your notebook. Um, okay. So though, but, it, but because you, you don't have to come by the school now, you just come by my porch and pick up your handbags. Okay. So, um, and then the hand ends, you put those in there, like whatever you're going to be turning in and all the handouts if you need them. Okay. So black and blue points. There are some problems on the test that, um, enough people missed enough points on i mean you got partial credit but they missed enough points on where where i feel like i need a safety net so that means you can redo the problem you'll get your test back and i will make a video it won't be a, just a posted key that people just copy off of i'm tired of doing that i'm going to post a video of me explain about an hour long video of me explaining you know in the correct order not all mixed up but in the correct order here's how you do one here's how you do two and going through each problem and trying to teach because sometimes the only time kids really learn it is when they're doing black and blue points so for blue points the corrections you make you get half the credit back so if you missed if it was worth 20 and you missed eight points you can get four points back on it okay now if it's a black problem and there is a, there is one there's at least one black problem on the test um you when you you will get all the credit back. Now you have to use black and blue pen. And I have a, a box of black and blue pens, which I can't really give out because, you know, so you're gonna have to go buy, if you don't have one at home, you have to go buy a blue pen and a black pen because I'm only looking at blue and black pen when you turn it back in. So um, I suppose with you all, the virtual kids, I will take your tea. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll try and I'll, I'll cover the score. I don't want people to FERPA, you know, I don't want your tests all in there together and you, everybody sees each of this test. Um, so I'll, I'll put something over the score uh, and I'll put them in the hand handouts box in this, I'll put them in this hand handouts box, I guess, um, for you to pick up. 95% of who comes to my porch is virtual students. There's no reason why an in-class kid comes to my porch. 
hardly ever. But uh, you do have you do have your right to privacy. So uh, somehow I will cover your score. Hate to put it in little envelopes. Ugh. Possibly. Maybe I'll put like a filing system in there with every person's name. And then you just look in your little file, you know, maybe. I don't know. I'll try and make it so it's private. But the point is that you you you've got a way to you have to have a way to get your test back so you can correct it, right? The paper pencil test. And so you'll correct it in blue or black pen. And um, I don't see why you couldn't just submit that. Uh, now, regular kids just hand it in, in the box, but maybe save you a trip back over to the house. No, 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 no. You gotta come back over to the house. I don't want my test, my paper pencil test out about in Norman. If this is next year and as my last year, I'd say, who cares? But I want to still keep some security. So you're going to have to, the hard part for you is, and you may say, hey, it's not worth it. Uh, I'm only going to get uh, eight points back. I'm not going to go pick it up. That's fine. Then I'll, I'll leave it out there for a couple of days. If you don't come get it, then, then I'll keep it. I'm not going to throw it away, but I'll keep it. I, I hang on to tests for like two years. Um, okay, so that will start. I'm thinking it's going to get pushed back to Friday. It may still be Thursday. And then that ends. If it ends, if it got pushed back to Friday, it'll end actually on a Wednesday. You'll have some time to come in, you know, work your schedule out. So this could be some, some kids end up getting like 70 points back on the daggone thing. Uh, so it can be really beneficial. Now, if you're one of these that are making A's the first time, then you probably won't mess with it. It's not even worth it. Okay. This is, mostly to, this, is mo this is mostly to get those kids that are struggling back in the ball game. Okay. Now, and then it's, the other thing about the calendar we talked about today is I'm not sure with those four days off, I don't know if we're going to make that date. I'm start, I'm mulling around in my head um, whether we can actually finish. Because if you look at packet two, we're only on 2.5. Tomorrow we'll do 2.6 and then we'll pretty quickly do 2.7. We got to get to 2.10. And those are some of the harder sheets we do in packet. Those are the hardest sheets we do in packet two. So two, seven, two, eight, those get kind of difficult. So I don't, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough stretch. I'm waiting until the end of this week. And then I may have to punt and push this guy back as much as I hate to do it push it back till after, or, or here's another idea, make this, um, you know, make it like a hundred points and do it like online or something. Try one of those deals. So point is I'm still kicking around ideas. Um, I may not start packet three there. I may just make packet two a mega packet with, with, a, with a couple of tests in there. Okay, I just don't want to backload all the scores until the final because that's going to kill kids. Okay. Uh, you all have a 75 at a 75 point cushion right now. That's going to go away. Uh, once I, I think some of you have already had, you, you're probably already seeing your uh, packet score, packet one, and the notes from packet one. Those are now in the grade book for about 70% of the students. I still got a stack over here I got to finish. Um, and I'll finish those next couple of days. Once all those are in, I will take this 75 points away. Okay. That was there just artificially to kind of make sure you weren't ineligible from one little small grade. Well, now you got enough cushion, so you shouldn't need that. We did joke Monday today. Okay. Physics review, uh, the joke Monday was uh, 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 Mitch Hedberg, Mitch Hedberg, classic. Okay, so physics review, you have until Sunday if you wanna do this, if you wanna do the finger dance, um, you can do your finger dancing uh, on the meter stick or you can make your own dance up, but these are all choreographies. And I don't know how many students will take me up on that. These are all choreographies, which it's good because it gives you a, it gives you a visual 
for what integration is. So it helps you in calculus as well as in physics. Uh, it kind of forces you. And so when you do these, some of these more clever things like Isaac, um, Isaac put his band of merry men together last year out in the hallway and they, they kind of danced through the, through the choreography, which they said that really helped them with this integration idea. So um, if you want to do some little project like that, based on, we said that virtual is going to use group seven. And so in the, I, I know that I screwed up and it was showing, it wasn't showing this because it was, I had the wrong screen on there, but um, if we are going to, we did do this together. So in the wrap up video. So if you want to do it, this is the one that you would do the choreography for. And it doesn't have to be centimeters versus seconds. It could be meters versus minutes, as long as the shape is the same. Okay, it could be miles versus miles per hour. I mean, you could do it in a car, whatever you want to do, um, or on a bicycle or something, you'd be creative, right? And then all you, once, once I love these creative ideas, then I show them to the next year's classes. Okay. So there is all the review. Oh, here's something. Uh, I don't have a, I went around looking for help videos on this and I couldn't find any, I haven't made any help videos on doing derivative graphs, which was shocking to me. I've made them on derivatives, but not on doing these derivative graphs. And so I do have this help page I wrote about 10 years ago, uh, about eight years ago. So this just shows how you go, how you do derivatives. You know, the, uh, you go down, you do the triangles, uh, you, you do the positive triangles, one color, negative right triangles, another color. And then from there you do the slope. So this is like the derivative process, a simplified version. You'll spend a semester of calculus doing derivatives until you're sick of them. And then this is the other way, this is the integral showing you a page anyway it's not a help video but it's a maybe this summer i'll make a help video on this but it's a help video it's a page on how to go from down here to you know we fill all this in finger dance stuff basically all right so that's available it's in the on the facebook group it's in the comments underneath any sheet where the where you're doing this in also as you all know i think uh the the ascii uh physics uh, YouTube channel, I was pointing out to the kids today that they should subscribe to this. I have 158 subscribers, but that includes people from last year. Uh, and I have random people that subscribe to it. So I don't, I know I may have 50% of my students subscribe, um, but that's the first place you'll find like this video will go on there first. And if you're subscribed then it'll give you a if you want to put notifications on, it'll let you know it's there. And so it might come in handy for you guys, especially. So you can say, oh yeah, okay, ASCII put up the wrap, wrap up video for Monday. All right, and, and that's listed. If you go over there on the playlist, it'll over here, it says, uh, how do you want to order these things? And if you'll go A through Z, then I've written these things so that by the playlist, they go in order that we do them in. All right, so that's the way to do it. Don't just let them, don't do it like latest added, uh, do it in, do it in uh, A to Z order. And then it makes more sense. And there's 38, there's 38 playlists and it covers pretty much everything we'll talk about this year, okay? And all the, all the uh, wrap up videos are in those first two, all right? I think that's it for our, Okay, so now I'm ready for today's physics. I was gonna go outside, but this morning we had a um, advisory day today. I think the worry that the uh, kids are gonna riot tomorrow or something, there's gonna be mass riots. Uh, so they were wanting to do an advisory uh, to kind of tell the kids, let's be civil, whatever happens at the election uh, okay, we well, didn't want to burn the building down, so or have fights or whatever. So we had a advisory day today, so it cut the hour short. Plus, it was a little chilly this morning, so it's better tomorrow. So we're going to hold off on the two point. We're going to hold off on two point six until tomorrow. All right. So today um, we we did joke Monday. That always takes time, and then we were down to like 
20 minutes after everything, all announcements and all the stuff we talked about. So I just decided to work on 2.5 in class since I'm doing 2.4 and 2.5 with you guys. So this you're supposed to have done on number one on 2.5. You may even have the whole thing done, but number one tonight, number two tomorrow night, number three Wednesday night, then turn it in Wednesday. We'll work on this one right now to, to, together. That's the main thing we'll do tonight. And then this one we'll do on, we'll do together on Wednesday. So don't worry about four and five. Okay. And hold on a minute. I've lost your chat. 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 Okay. Nothing. Good. I mean, we're, we're a small bunch. You don't really need to say in the chat. We all know each other. So. You can just shout out if you want to ask a question. All right, number one though, the one thing that was bothering students on number one, you may have done it already, but it is circular motion, okay? So this is a situation where you're gonna use black equations, okay? But it's not that hard. I just want you to realize it's a black equation problem. Now, let's look at number four, okay. So number four, let's go, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna work it with you and you guys should have your papers out and maybe you've already worked it, but um, if you haven't, um, if you worked it and had no problem, then might as well just you know, sign off. But if, you've, if you haven't worked it yet or you had trouble with it, I'll give you some, some best practices here, okay? So here we go, uh, Slappy the Clown, he's, he goes, he falls asleep, rolls off, so he's going to fall 40 feet. So you always want to circle the number in the unit in the problem, all numbers and units. Uh, any formulas they give you. By the way, this formula is off. Um, we're going, this is a blue equation and we're getting ready to, after tomorrow, we'll finally start to, uh, oh, I do want to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that right now. And then we'll come back and do this at the end. But tomorrow, oops, sorry. Tomorrow we're going to do this lab. Uh, this is, there's, there's a book called uh, The 10 Most Beautiful Experiments Ever Done. And it takes all science, I'm talking about life science, any kind of genetics, whatever it is, but the 10 most beautiful, large hadron collider, 10 most beautiful experiments ever done. And he goes through, and I think it's Stephen Johnson is the author, I believe, of this one. But he goes through and he talks about, you know, Galvani and, and all, and, and William Harvey and all the things with blood flow and um, physics, astronomy, those kind of things. And this, this experiment was voted or he determined this to be the number one experiment ever done by man, by man, by mankind, I mean, um, because it was done by Galileo 1605. And this is what we're gonna do tomorrow in class. And I'll go into this, I'll do a whole, probably half a day, half an hour on Galileo, I think probably Thursday or Friday in class. I don't, this year, because of COVID, I have not been able to talk hardly any history. And I, normally I've talked, we talk history constantly, but I had to make the conscious decision to, because I was so far behind to eliminate all history talk, which is horrible for me. It's like terrible, but I love the history of physics. Anywho, um, I, this is one thing I will talk about. I've got to talk about Galileo. All right. So, um, this is Galileo's, a more improved version of his um, inclined plane. And I got, I, I, I don't know if I took this picture. I don't think I took this picture, but I did take pictures in, uh, if you guys have been to uh, Florence, uh, if you ever get a chance to go to Florence, there's tons of art museums there. Well, one day my wife and I were there and she decided to go shopping and go to the art museums. And I spent the whole day, pretty much the whole day in the Galileo Museum. And they have, this is a mock-up. Uh, it's right from his specs. Uh, his original inclined plane is no longer there. It's been whatever, it got washed away probably in Venice or something. But this is a, and they have these at OU too. Uh, at the uh, History of Science Museum on the fourth floor of Bazell, they have a wooden mock-up. But the thing that Galileo made a, uh, he made a model finally that was 32 feet long. It was, uh, that's like 20, 20 cubits, somewhere in there. Um, 
he had Salvati. He didn't build it. He had Salvati, who was his kind of his go-to guy, his shop guy, make it for him. And um, he improved it as the time went on. This one isn't, this wasn't the longest one he made, but this was probably the most sophisticated one. Those bells, there's little bells. These are bells right there. And as the ball would roll past the bell, it would have a really low, it couldn't, it could not impede motion, right? You could blow the whole point. So it was extremely, um, with a lot, with a tiny, just a tiny bit of torque causes that to ring the bell as the ball just barely nips it as the ball goes by. And remember, Galileo is trying to determine, the whole point of this was um, everyone believed Aristotle and pretty much everyone, the church, of course, it was convenient for them to believe it, that the, um, oops, that the uh, world was flat, uh, that, the, that uh, the sun went around the earth, um, that gravity was personified by Aristotle in a philosophical manner. So Galileo was saying, no, that can't be right. Um, cause get, cause Aristotle also said that heavier objects fall, uh, at a speed that is proportional to their size, which he said this in what, 400 BC, somewhere in there. And nobody questioned it for 2000 years. Anybody could have taken a rock and a boulder and dropped them and saw they hit the ground at the same time. But no one ever really had time to do that. No one even questioned Aristotle. So Galileo uh, questioned the idea of the earth. He realized early on that the earth revolved around the sun. He knew, and the, and the earth spun on its own axis. He knew that um, from an experiment he did when he was like a teenager sitting in church one day. Um, but anyway, so he wanted to quantify this ethereal thing called gravity. Uh, what is gravity? Like, like he, of course he's religious like everybody else back then, but, but what is, you know, you want to understand the mind of God, right? Same with Kepler. Kepler wanted to understand the mind of God. So did Tycho. But, Galileo said, I want to quantify, not just qualify it, I want to quantify. Well, so he drops objects, but the problem is, how do you time it? How would Galileo time it? Anybody want to hazard a guess? How would Galileo time uh, what he's trying to measure? He's trying to measure, you know, he can measure the height, like he could go like three cubits and then drop something. He, he was going to drop it off the Leaning Tower of Pisa because that was the tallest struck man-made structure around. Um, same one that, that da Vinci was going to jump off of, right? Galileo, 100 years later, was going to drop things. He had said he proposed. Well, the, what's the problem there? If you're trying to measure uh, gravity, why would he have trouble... Uh, he can, he can measure the height, no problem. What would he have a real hard time measuring? I'll wait, I'm working by the clock here. <laughs> what, how, would, how would Galileo measure? He's trying to say, okay, I'll get, he's trying to determine how fast an object, he knew the object was speeding up as, it's, as it falls to the earth. But how would he measure that? He wants to get numbers, not just, I kind of think it's speeding up. Because a lot of people didn't think that. How would he measure that? He devoted uh, a huge part of his life to this. And this is the, Galileo is considered one of the top five thinkers of all time. So if it's worth one of the top five thinkers of all times, mine, it's worth your mind for a few minutes. How would you do it back in Galileo's day? Anybody know what the problem would be? And why you had to put those, why you had to put those bells there? It's a riddle, mystery. Why would he do that? It's 
someone has to hazard a guess. You're amongst friends here. Why would Galileo have trouble measuring the acceleration of an object falling to the earth? This, this is this question that started physics. Guys are being awful quiet. Surely this has brought up a question in your mind. You don't have to answer me, but you can ask a question. Perhaps a clarification. No. If I'm having trouble getting you to talk, I'm going to have a heck of a time tomorrow. Well, it'll be actually, it'll be no, it'll be tomorrow. We'll talk about this in class. Oh, I look forward to that one. What do you think? Why would Galileo have trouble measuring the acceleration? of let's say a rock falling from the leaning tower of Pisa. He wouldn't know the acceleration. He would just know the velocity because he had time and distance. Okay. Um, he can know average velocity, um, but you said time. How's he gonna measure time? iPhone, was it iPhone one back then? <laughs> what did he have to measure time with? Thank you, thank you though, Rose, for the, that got us somewhere, it got us somewhere. How would he measure time? What would he use to measure time? Didn't have a watch. This is a question we have every, we talk about this every year. Maybe the little uh, bells were like checkpoints. They were. Now he, you are correct. Those bells are not, they are not evenly spaced. Um, and we'll get to that, we'll get to that. But one, okay, so, and I'm almost done with this and then we'll go back and we'll do that number four and then we'll call it a call tonight. But this, he called this, diluting gravity because the problem is when you when he drops something and like if you go to the ceiling of our of your house you go to the ceiling of your room and you drop a ball how long do you think it's going to take to hit the floor give me a guess ballpark about two seconds okay that's a ballpark right it's actually unless you have a really tall ceiling it's actually less than a second. Um, in our room, in my room, at, at school, it's 0.78 seconds, somewhere in there. Things fall. The point is, things fall really fast. Uh, like when you trip and fall, you're walking along, next thing you know, you're on the ground. So what just happened? Or is it, oh, I'll catch that. No, you won't. Gravity is really strong on Earth, and it pulls things down really fast. So Galileo could not. He, he tried to. But if he doesn't have a watch, how is he going to time? And this is before he did the bells. How is he going to time? What's he going to use to time things? There just wasn't enough time. I mean, okay, so someone always suggests, well, I'll use a sundial. Okay, but the problem is sundials don't give you seconds. They might give you the hour of the day. Uh, someone said, well, use a pendulum clock the pendulum clock hadn't been invented yet. In fact, who thought of a pendulum clock? Galileo. So you couldn't use a pendulum clock. You couldn't use a sundial. He had to use his pulse because your heart, and he had to work on, he had to practically meditate because he had to keep his pulse constant. So he used his pulse. So the problem is when you use your pulse, if I drop a ball from a ceiling and I use my pulse, I get about one and a half beats. We'll do it in class tomorrow. And you get about one and a half beats, that's it. So he had to dilute gravity, have it rolled out an incline plane where he could get 
six, seven beats of his heart. So he could actually start to, and he, he would also sing. He would sing songs because songs are rhythmic. So he could think where the, then he'd say where the ball was here, where the ball was here. That's why I started putting those bells there. Um, okay. So that's, that's a coming, that's a preview of tomorrow. And that's as much as we got talked about in class. So I don't want to get too far ahead of them. So now let's go back to let's do number four and then we'll call it good. Okay. So first thing you do is, and by the way, this should be a negative right here, a negative one half GT squared. It comes from the blue equations. Uh, once we start understanding acceleration, then we can develop the orange equations, which we'll start to do pretty quick. And then eventually that'll switch over to the blue equations. Blue equations are a subset of, of orange. And then we have a G, now little g, this is little g. Now, little g is different than big G. Big capital G is something else, but little g is acceleration due to gravity, okay? It's probably a wrapper too, but, but little, little g. So it's got to be some lowercase g. So that's acceleration due to gravity on Earth, all right? Okay, so what is that 40 foot? What symbol would go with it? That'd be the height. That is the height. Um, but we're going to call that. And I, you know what? Uh, I'm cool with that. You say height, and it really is the height. Height is always absolute value. Height is always, you can't have a negative height. That's illegal. But it's, it's height, the way it's written there. Um, but we're going to turn it into delta y. Now that although the h is 40 feet, delta y is actually negative 40 feet. Why would I say that? Because he's falling down. Yeah, so we say the origin, unless otherwise specified, the origin is where you start, right? So he started here. Otherwise, it would have said from somebody in the ground's perspective, but it wasn't. It was Slappy's perspective. Well, he started up here, and then he fell down below where he was. That makes delta y, which is important. Delta y is negative 40 feet. Okay. That's why a drawing is important. And these drawings are simple. Uh, you can just stick a little arrow there for G. I'm lazy. Okay. And that's really all I need for a drawing. Okay. Some people on the test, they got the answer right, but they didn't put anything in for a drawing. Well, it's required. So they automatically lost five points. It's just, I feel bad, but you got to have a drawing. I'm trying to pattern you into, you know, how to attack these problems. Okay. So symbol thoughts <clears throat> is next. And this is just your equations, right? Your symbol equations. So we have, uh, I'm going to go blue since it is a blue equation. We have delta y equals, yeah. You are screen sharing, I'm recording. Yes, okay. Delta y equals negative one half g t squared, okay? But I got to solve this for T. So let me give you guys a minute and come up. I made them do it in class. Um, come up with what the equation for T is, okay? I'll give you a minute. You write it on your paper and then we'll do it together. But I want you to write it down first. Whoa. All right, so this, you're gonna multiply both sides by two, divide both sides by G, we have two delta Y over G, a yeah, negative two delta Y over G equals T squared, right? So therefore T is the root of negative two delta Y over G. Now, does that cause anybody concern? I'm gonna move it. You guys got to talk to me because I'm taking this chat out here. I can't see anything in the chat. Just the root part. How would you put that like in the... Well, the that's true. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But there's something that should uh, set your nerves on end about that. I agree that we have to deal with that square root. We will. Is it just because you multiplied by the opposite or the reciprocal of one half? 
So yeah, you can you can do that. But what's what's the weird part about the radical? As it, as it's written there. Like, what the heck? What the heck is this going on? Didn't that bother you guys from algebra? Can you do that? What's the square root of a negative number? I. I, right? Imaginary numbers. We're dealing, also we're dealing with imaginary numbers here. You see that you see why it's not a problem though? If you take a look here, that's why that had to be a negative 40. Because I'm going to plug a negative 40 in for delta y, which will make it a positive radical. OK. Because I had a student today get a little upset about that. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa how, how can you do that? Because it's, he fell below. I mean, physics works. And if, something, if an equation doesn't work, your physics doesn't work. OK. so. In this box, I'm going to put a negative 2. In this box, I'm going to put a delta y. In this box, what am I going to put? 1 over g. Yes, not g, 1 over g. Thank you. And then blah, 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 blah. That, that squiggly line means that I am done with my givens. This whole area is going to be a givens. Uh, this is my givens area. So don't do what some students did on the test and they try to do all this pre, um, they, they get in a hurry. A lot of times my smart kids, they get in a hurry and they try to um, uh, already do, like already convert kilometers to meters and no, 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 no. In the yellow area must be, because these things are gonna get harder, in the area must be what you were given in the problem exactly as it's written in the problem okay so the negative two comes down uh, okay negative two comes down the delta y which is negative 40 feet and now i want you to you you're on your paper give me one over g show write that down your paper first before we talk about it i want you to do it Okay, you got your answer. So we have the obviously the 35.3 go. I made the kids go to the board and do this. So the 35.3 goes on the bottom because I flipped it. But I had a number of kids that would do that and then they would still do kilometers minutes squared. In other words, they flipped the number and didn't flip the units. If you flip the number, you got to flip the units. Okay. So you also can't do this, by the way. This is also illegal. Not that that's just plain wrong. This isn't necessarily wrong. It's just illegal. Kilometers over minute squared. You, you, it's illegal in unit analysis to have a a divided unit inside a cell. This is called a cell. You can't have a divided unit. So you have to flip this. So it looks more like this. So you have kilometers and then you put the minute squared up top. And I did have some students, I thought they're pretty smart today. They put minute dot minute. And that's always a good idea. That way you can kill them off one at a time. Okay. So Did the square root not cancel oh, out? Oh, the... ho, 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 thank you. Square root, I got to screw everything. It goes over every bit of my problem. This whole thing is square root, okay? Now I'm gonna end up in seconds over here because it said, I mean, seconds. But if I'm gonna end up in seconds, what unit has to be inside the radical? Minutes. I want, it's gotta have seconds. Well, maybe seconds second squared. Ah, thank you. Second squared. So inside the radical, I've got to end up with second squared. Okay. Uh, so I want to eliminate it down to the second square because I think the square to second square gives me seconds. Okay. 
So that's the little, little tricky thing about this problem. Well, the rest of this is all going to be, um, it's all going to be conversions. And I think we found that there are three conversions I need here. And this one on a test, I'll always give you um, like, like you got to know the metric stuff, but I'll always give you, and this one I didn't because I knew it was a homework assignment, but 0 0.305 meters equals one foot. Uh, that is something you will use. 0 0.305 meters equals a foot. So um, I think you'll end up with three slots here uh, to end up with the second squared. So uh, no, why don't you do it and then ask me questions as you're going. If you get stuck, let's go ahead and just take a minute here and let you try it. And I'll just shut up for a minute. Okay, I should probably pause it and then start recording again, but oh well. Let's get the entire experience. Okay, so I get nervous with dead airspace. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going and you kind of stay stay ahead of me if you can. Uh, this I'm gonna since I told you that, might as well use it, right? So we got uh, 0 0.305, we got one foot on bottom. 0 0.305, because I get rid of that foot there, 0 0.305 meters on top, bring out the green kill pin. I, I tend to kill as I go because um, I don't want to end up, if I don't, I'll forget. Some of these are long, you know, they're like, end up like 12 slots long. So you, you should probably kill as you go. All right. Um, and then what's next? We went up in seconds, squared. Uh, so I guess we have a choice here. Let me go ahead and get the low hanging fruit and kill off that kilometer. Now, what I saw students do on a test again, as I saw this, I don't know how many times, 10 to the third kilometers in a meter. Okay. Everyone does it. Everyone does it. Sometimes you're just not thinking you're in a hurry, but that's going to make your answer off by a million. All right. Now that only, it was a 40 point problem on the on the test, I think you only lost a couple of points. If that's if I found out, if I went through and looked, and I saw that's the only mistake they made, uh, I only took off two points. So that's the good thing about partial credit is you can be way off and still not lose much. All right, so that's one kilometer over ten to the third or a thousand meters. Uh, yeah, so remember that the big number goes to the small unit on a conversion. These are all clever forms of one. Okay, so bring out the green kill pin, kilometers, kilometers, meters, meters. All right, now I got all I got left is the minute squared, the second squared. Turns out I, I didn't have to break up the minutes, but it didn't hurt to try to just to have it there. So I got, uh, I'm going to leave it as it's written, minute dot minute. And how many seconds? Or in a minute, well, 60. So we can just go ahead and write it this way, I guess, 60 seconds dot 60 seconds, or you can just put 3,600. Okay, so now I kill, kill the minutes. I'm left with seconds squared. And so now you punch all that in and carefully. But if I was taking a test, uh, you guys time yourselves, but if I was taking a test, and and I and I, I I knew it was going to take me bell to bell. I would stop right there and move on, because if I grade this, and this is why you should take an AP exam as well. If it's free response anyway, if you don't need the answer for another part of the problem. But when I grade this, I would grade. I would give you if this is worth forty points. I'd give you a thirty-eight out of forty if you stopped right there. So the math, I mean, I figure a monkey can punch numbers into a calculator. So although it does take some skill because you got the square root and all that, but you might get you might get a 37 out of 40 at worst case scenario. But thing is, what I saw was students would spend, I see all the racial marks, 
forever on the unit analysis and then skip and then the time would run out and they would leave off like 70 points wouldn't even touch those problems and that's crazy you see what i'm saying so at this point i would move on to the next problem if i had time at the end i'd come back and punch all the numbers in okay when you do that the answer is at the bottom of the page and you get 1.58 seconds and you can you can prove me right later, but you get 1.58 seconds once you take the square root. So to fall 40 feet, that's a four story fall. It took Slappy 1.58 seconds. And I just didn't make this up. This is, this really is the gravity of earth. So um, you fall pretty fast. All right. We're not going to do five right now. We'll do five on Wednesday. Uh, any questions on four, though? That's a, that's a medium type problem. Uh, five is more of a in the harder range, a little bit hard, a little bit harder than four. Uh, we don't get the real hard ones till second semester. All right. Sometimes there's like equations inside and it gets it can get nasty. I heard today that that D, D. Lee uh, Powell, uh, David Powell, <clears throat> gave the kids number four uh, as a practice problem last year. So that made me happy because he's teaching them the gold standard, which is cool. All right, who has a question? We got about five minutes before I wrap this thing up. Any questions about? So tomorrow, be looking for me. Uh, I'm going to do it at four o'clock. Now, there could be something comes up and, you know, I got to go pick my wife up or something happened. And, and uh, you go on, you come and go to the same place, ask you Zoom to and tell somebody Zoom bombs us. We'll keep that the password. Just now you know what it is. Just come to the same, look for me, come to the same place. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and make it four. If it's not four, I'll try to uh, give you a heads up, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We, we, we're, we're just figuring this stuff out. Okay. So around four tomorrow, I'll talk about what happened uh, tomorrow in class. So you should be caught up. You won't have to worry about just a Monday night Zoom. So no more Monday night Zooms. I'm taking those off the calendar. Yay. Um, and then you have the optional four to five every week, every time we have a class. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes. I, uh, Could we do a little of number one? Uh, we can set it up. Yeah. Uh, let's look at number one for a second. All right, so number one, um, how many weeks will it take a robotic rover to moving at an average rate? So I gave you this weird, this is a, this is a velocity, right? That's omega. So I gave you omega, and then one twelfth the way around Jupiter's moon Europa. Well, all the way around Europa is how many radians? Two pi. Two pi. R. Right. No, radians just two pi. Now circumference is two pi r, but we're not talking about circumference. If you if you find that you have to go look something up to work a problem, then you're probably doing it wrong. Or you're doing it maybe i'm not saying you wouldn't get it right but you're doing it the hard way delta theta all the way around is two pi well i'm going one twelfth way around so that's two pi divided by 12. right so therefore delta theta is pi over six that's how far i went um and i and then my omega and then you know that omega Omega is simply delta theta over time. And we're solving for time, right? Uh, right? How long? Will it take? How many weeks? So T then, to get the T here, that's delta theta over omega. And so that's the equation you're going to use here, delta theta over omega. And then maybe the question is, oh, OK, so right. so. Um, yeah, so you would have, that's pi, okay, so that's, 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This caused controversy, shoot. Okay, the three boxes, that's right. I thought I took that box out of there. Because just pure symbols, you would say delta, theta, and omega, one of omega. I think the reason why that third box is there is because uh, delta, theta is pi over six, but that's, that's not good. Shoot. I thought I took it out of there. Okay, I'll tell kids tomorrow that. I'm glad, Io, I'm glad, I'll give you a zoom point because I'm glad you brought that up. I'll point that out tomorrow. Um, surprised they didn't ask. Anyway, so you, we're not gonna work the whole thing, but you know, then you just plug in your pi over six. You plug in your pi over six for uh, delta theta. Uh, and that's, there's no units there, right? And then for omega, you plug in this crazy number on bottom. But then, then what do you do? I mean, what do you do for units? Well, radians you don't include because it's not a unit, right? Just a word. So, but the seconds, notice the seconds go on top and that's what you want. Then you put the squiggly, dang on it. I hate it when I do stuff like that because then it's just gonna confuse everybody. How do I fix that? It's the second time that's happened in this packet. Anyway, I'm gonna fix that right now as soon as we get off the air. All right, for next year. All right, so um, anywho, that's that's helping. You can do the rest, right? Uh, I will leave you all alone. I'm at my limit, and um, thanks for coming. Uh, we might. We, I'm not saying we'll never do another night one because we might. We probably will for tests or something. You know, one of those night before the tests kind of things, but um, or two nights for the test, but no more of these daily zooms on Mondays. Okay, so I'll see you guys. Thanks for coming. I'll stop the sharing. Thanks for coming. And uh, I'll see, maybe see you tomorrow. Bye.